On this episode of installing a Honda K24 in a Mazda MX-5 Miata, Matt drills holes in his transmission, he cuts up his perfectly good subframe and completes the rest of the prep work needed to prepare the car for the new motor. Next, we're gonna start modifying the transmission. First, I'm gonna release the stock throwout bearing and pivot fork. Next, we're gonna remove the guide tube assembly. Uh, this is the six or seven bolts that you can see right there, including that one uh, pivot ball that normally the clutch fork would pivot on. <clears throat> All right, and this should just pull off. Yep. All right, so before you put your release bearing on, the k out of kit does come with a couple of seals that will help you uh, keep your oil in your transmission. Don't forget the shim, and that'll sit right in this recess right here. Don't forget to use the new hardware that came out of supplies since your new release bearing is a different thickness than your old guide tube. All right, next we're gonna drill a couple of half inch holes in the bell housing. Um, those will allow the clutch lines to pass through from these outlets. All right, and you can see where I drilled my two holes. It looks like they line up fairly well with where the clutch lines should go, so I'm gonna continue drilling them out a little bigger. Okay, so I have the transmission adapter plate mocked up on the transmission. I'm doing this just so I can get an idea of where the starter will go. It's gonna be on this side here. You can see the cutout for it right there. And we need to cut away some of the bell housing to actually let it fit in there. I may have to clean up the edges here on top and bottom just to make them a little bit more straight rather than continuing the circle. All right, so I'm just trying to fit the starter in here. And it looks like it's close. But I definitely have to trim those edges back. All right, so I've got this all cleanly ground away here. So the starter doesn't actually bolt right to this. I should have realized this. Where it does need to fully fit or mount to is in the engine right here. So, starter slides in here, mounts up like that, and you can see there's a little notch cut into the starter right where it starts protruding from the engine. So that's going to be my reference point for how far it needs to fit into that um, transmission uh, bell housing adapter. So let's go back there and see how well it fits. So if I slide this in here, you can see those two notches start protruding well into that cutout area before they interfere with anything. So I'm pretty confident that this is enough space cut out. It might even be too much, but that's okay. All right, so we're looking at the trans again. Uh, this time I'm gonna connect up the two uh, lines off the bleeder. This top one up here is gonna be, or the two lines off the slave cylinder. This top one up here is going to be the bleeder, and the bottom one is going to be the line that runs up to the master cylinder. We'll use the top as a bleeder so that air goes up and comes out of the bleeder. Alright, so we'll tighten those on down, and these will be all set. Alright, up next, we've got the a engine hanging here, so we can work on installing the flywheel, clutch, and pressure plate in the transmission adapter plate, so we can get the trans made it up and get this thing stuffed in the car. We have one of my favorite pieces right here which is the Fly Miata, <laughs> sorry, not the Fly Miata, the K Miata fl uh, flywheel. Love this piece, and we're matching it up with this Fly Miata Stage 1 Happy Meal Clutch and Pressure Plate. This is what was originally on my car, or uh, what was on my car when I pulled the old engine out, so it's going back on this. Never to be seen again. <laughs> Alright, got the, tar the flywheel all torqued down. And I did apply blue Loctite to those I remembered halfway through when I was doing it. The dowels go in the middle of these sets of three holes. Alright, I've got that pressure plate all tightened down on there. Alright, before you put the adapter plate on, make sure you have your alignment dowels in place. They go into this hole right here and into this hole right here. And then you can slide your adapter plate on. All right, so now we're looking at the adapter plate and we're gonna install it on the engine first. So this side, the side that says Kamiata right there, is the side that's gonna face towards the transmission. 
So this is, this is the face we're gonna see once it's installed on the engine. All right, so we're gonna try to get this transmission that actually made it up to the engine here. All right, I've got a couple bolts started in the bell housing at the top here. I've got the transmission and the adapter plate lined up pretty nicely and they're very close together. So I've just got these bolts in to help me hold it in place. All right, this trans is installed. So guys, I just wanna take a quick second to say that if you like what you're seeing with this build and if you wanna case swap your Miata, this was really made possible and made very easy by K-Power's kit. Now, K-Power has partnered with me and if you wanna get free shipping off your orders from K-Power, go ahead and use the promo code CASHED and you will get free shipping. Their kit really is saving us tons of time with this swap because it's already thought out, it's already designed, and it really makes it very plug and play. With that, I'm to get back to the rest of this video. All right, next we can work on installing the clutch master cylinder. It's this three quarter inch uh, Willwood master cylinder here. Now we already removed the clutch master cylinder from the car when we were taking out the engine, but we also have to remove the push rod on the pedal. So here we have the adapter plate that came out of supplies that will allow you to mount the Willwood master cylinder to the same location as the stock uh, Miata Clutch Master. What you'll notice though is that there's a little bit of material overlapping here in the hole that the new master cylinder has to fit through. So I'm just going to mark up this area right here and cut out that material. Alright, I've just about got the master cylinder fitting through the firewall. So I've added the couple of nuts there to secure to the firewall and a couple of nuts to secure the master cylinder to the adapter plate. So now we can move underneath the dashboard and connect it to the pedal on the other side. So now we got to remove this little pin right here so we can get this uh, clevis pin off and replace it with the one that actually threads onto the Willwood master cylinder. All right, I got the push rod started in the threads on that clevis pin. And then once I got it pretty far in, I attached the master cylinder all the way to the firewall, snugged it down. And I'm just coming back under here to check how the free play is. So the steering rack in my car was a power steering rack from the factory, but the previous owner uh, deleted the power steering. For this swap though, we need to make a couple modifications to the rack itself. There are two bosses here, one here and one here along the rack body that we need to cut off in order for the oil pan to fit over the rack and subframe. If you have a manual rack, then this won't be a problem and I believe the NB rack can also do without this modification. All right, I just got the first fitting off. Um, I just used the Dremel to buzz through it most of the way. All right, got the second one out. All right, so we have these 3D printed plastic pieces here to plug up the power steering rack, and I'll install those. All right, so next we can mount up the fuel pressure regulator. I have the Fuel Lab FPR that uh, KMEO offers on their site. They already have a couple of Dash 6 AM uh, unions attached to it. Um, I've already actually marked out, you might be able to see it, but a spot on the firewall here where it'll fit pretty nicely. It'll still sit below the hood line and the lines will have plenty of room to run behind the uh, washer fluid here and then down over to where the uh, fuel lines will be bent back to just about over here by the uh, frame rail. All right, gonna actually mount the regulator to the wall now. Right. There we go, it's all mounted up to the wall. I think it looks pretty nice there. All right, so now I'm working on bending my fuel lines, and these actually bend surprisingly easy by hand. There's just a bracket down here that you need to undo, and it'll pop right out of that. And then you can really just pull on these with one hand. I used a couple fingers from my other hand to I uh, kind of place a bend location farther down the line. And I tried to spread it out as much as I could so that I don't get any like hard kinks in the line. Where I'm trying to place these is between these two brake hoses right here. Um, just so I can get them as far, the fuel lines at least, as far away from where the exhaust will be as possible. I'm just going to be using this Dorman line cutter tool to actually cut the fuel lines so I can attach the AN adapter. 
I definitely didn't want to do this with like an angle grinder or anything because I do not want any sparks. All right, so I goofed pretty bad, and I'm sharing this with you guys so hopefully you don't make the same mistake. Um, so if you're cutting your fuel lines like I am uh, so that you can put on an AN adapter, be very careful about <laughs> where you cut them. Um, I cut this lower hose down here, and when I cut it and as soon as the line came off, I quickly realized that it was now the lowest or close to the lowest point of the fuel system uh, because gas started pouring out straight from the tank. All right, so now we have that end of the fuel line right there cut to where I want it. And we're gonna attach this set of AN adapters to it. So at the bottom here, we have a hard line to AN adapter followed by a 45 degree bend. That'll bring it up towards the fuel pressure regulator right there. All right, we got those AN to hardline adapters on there, and we've actually got the 45 degree hose end adapters on those two. And you can see this point right up to where the fuel pressure regulator sits. All right, we also have to trim some parts of the car just so that the exhaust can fully clear. Um, this rear shelf back here is one of the parts we have to cut just a little bit. I haven't actually test fit the exhaust yet, but it came out of notes that most NAs need this trimmed by about maybe a half inch. We'll see. And then we're also going to have to trim a little bit around just the very edge of the subframe down there, um, just so that the oil pan can actually clear when it's sitting in there. And with all of that prep work, our chassis is ready for the K24. If you want to see the next episode right now, it is live on my Patreon account. Also, don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss anything, and we hope you stick around for the next one. Take care.